back on this project again. This is the Murray Riding Lawnmower I've been working on. We changed a bunch of parts in it. Does it start? Turn the key. Uh, the battery is live. I mean, it's it's a brand new battery. I think the solenoid is bad, so I bought a new solenoid. We're gonna put that in together today. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Pine Meadows High Weed Farm. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. Troubleshooting this lawnmower. Uh, turn the key on. Now, we got a brand new battery. Okay, it could be a couple of things. But uh, it sounds to me like there's no, no, any, there's no clicking coming from the solenoid, which starts, uh, goes right to the starter. Now, remember, in the last video, we replaced the starter. We also replaced the coil, we replaced the battery, and we also replaced the um, carburetor. Um, in a previous time, I did replace the uh, ignition switch here. It's a brand new switch, so I'm thinking we're not getting power to activate. So I'm going to troubleshoot this, I'm going to get my meter out, and we're going to find out if there's uh, power going to that line to uh, activate the switch. This is the solenoid. This is the point in which I got to test to see if there's power getting to it when I turn the key on. Now the thing starts when I jump between these two legs right here. It'll start. But there's no power going to here. So let's check that. Checking to see the amount of power in the battery. Yep, we got 12 and a half volts. This is a 12 volt battery, brand new battery, fully charged. A half inch wrench will release these nuts. You remove those and you unplug this one. It just unplugs like that. And then a 13 30 second socket wrench will release those two nuts on each side Okay, here is the new solenoid switch. Uh, these are the grounding points. This is your uh, connection to your key cylinder switch, which will activate the solenoid switch. Battery positive goes here. Starter positive goes here. And then also your hot wire feeding your ignition switch goes here. We're gonna we're gonna add a grounding wire from the uh, the uh, key switch to this point too. So we're putting it in this way. We're gonna put our first bolt in. Give it a couple turns just to get it started. Now this other side, I added this grounding wire to the ignition switch. Put my bolt through that. And get that started in the hole. And then tighten those down. Now I did take a wire brush to the mount to make sure I'm going to get a good solid connection uh, for the at least the ground with this because I want to make sure I don't have any electrical problems. The 
orange wire plugs in right here. Okay, that's on and secure. Now we connect the lead that goes directly to the starter. And tighten that down. And on this other one, we take that off. And we place the battery positive cable to that. And then we got our fusible positive that feeds directly to the um, up to the um, ignition switch tighten that down I thought this had been changed out because I did buy one for the gentleman who was using it um, over at the other ranch and then when he moved um, he was supposed to put the new one in apparently he did not because that other one did not show any sign of being new it could have been though okay tight enough now I disconnected this early I don't know if I showed it on the uh, show but I disconnected it earlier and this is the ground or the negative cable that anytime you work with electricity or electrical components on a device disconnect your ground I wanted to point out to you guys, if this doesn't start, it could be one of three different things. Here's a pressure switch here. Uh, that has to be pressed in for the lawnmower to start. It's an emergency cutoff switch. It deactivates the lawnmower if the rider should fall out. There is another pressure switch right down here. It's that switch right there. This has to be disengaging this lever disengages the belts on the mower blades because you don't want the motor blades turning while you're trying to start the engine underneath here there's yet another pressure switch a third pressure switch that goes to the clutch pedal clutch has to be engaged in order for this thing to start so three pressure switches have to be engaged press down in order for this thing to start now we have power so it was a faulty solenoid switch so let's see if this thing will start and um, stay started let me spray some um, starting fluid down there filter cover and we should be good to go 
and as soon as I get my trailer back together, I can transport this to its new home because I have it sold. But I have to go get some more oil. I got the oil filter. I'll change this out and we'll do a full oil change before it goes bye bye. So let's see if it starts. <laughs> getting victory over things Ugh, love it so I got victory over yet another machine and this is one of my uh, to do's that's been haunting me for a while finally got her done now I can check this off my list and move forward like I said we got this sold I am finishing up my flatbed trailer project waiting for seals uh, the bearing seals to come in we had to order them from the factory and it's taking a little bit too long but hopefully they'll be here uh, coming from I think they said Kentucky but anyway the flatbed trailer project is once we get that done then I can transport this over to its new home yep beautiful thing it's a beautiful thing when I get a victory over something so let's recap troubleshooting the electrical system on this why it wouldn't start in the first place well it turned out to be what we found out the uh, solenoid switch the switch was actually faulty blown out inside wasn't activating at all went ahead and added an additional ground wire to make sure that the key lock was uh, grounded appropriately because they need both positive and negative wires coming to the ignition switch checking out all my three pressure switches one for the seat one for the uh, lever engaging and disengaging the blades and then the clutch those are three they all were functioning uh, so those are three other points of electrical issues you might be um, um, needing to be aware of and that's what causes it to turn over that's what activates the starter itself in a previous video we did replace the starter it was bad the coil was old another part of the electrical system we went ahead and replaced the coil while we were at it we replaced the uh, this, the carburetor with the appropriate carburetor that was uh, designed for this model of engine and uh, that too had an electrical component on it so this whole thing was troubleshooting electrical uh, so it works got victory I'm your host Jerry Hansen this is Pine Meadows Hobby Farm I want to thank you guys for joining me on this epic journey of just backyard mechanic series troubleshooting riding lawnmowers stay tuned to more videos you can do that by subscribing and clicking that bell, bell icon that alerts you to new videos as I do upload them give us a thumbs up like the channel click that share button sharing my videos on your social media platforms helps us out also leave a comment and be safe please always always be kind we'll see you guys in the next episode bye bye now